good morning, ladies and gentlemen. The action part of Indian philosophy is yoga. Yoga in all its forms. Yoga as Gyan Yoga, the path to that great uh, unification with the divine. True knowledge, through true knowledge. Bhakti Yoga, the losing of oneself in complete adoration and devotion to the divine. And therefore, in losing oneself, becoming united with all that there is. Karma Yoga, the losing of oneself in uh, selfless action. Action with no desire of reward, action for itself. Taking us away from material gains and material preoccupations, losing oneself to gain true knowledge. And Raja Yoga, through the asanas, the seat from which to meditate and reaching divine uh, knowledge. Now, as we have uh, spoken over the past uh, Sundays, there are uh, so many paths through Bhakti Yoga, through so many ways to achieve this uh, unity. And as we have seen, there has been a social contract between the sculptors, the painters, and society. The sculptors, the painters, are providing their visualization, their uh, portrayal of that which is within themselves, that which is a combination of what has been inherited from the finest knowledge of the best, uh, distilled knowledge of the best minds uh, before them and presenting it to society. And society, as we have seen, in fact, uh, it is the people who directly patronized the making of all the art of ancient India. It was not the kings. So there was this social contract between the painters and sculptors and society. Then, of course, we notice that arts were not restricted to painting and sculpture. There was the art, for instance, of dance. There was dance, there was music. And in the Indian tradition, all the arts were towards the same purpose, towards leading us on the path towards true knowledge, making us aware of that grace which underlies all that there is. So, ladies and gentlemen, in days gone by, dance was not something which was meant to be performed on a stage for people to clap. No. The artist, the dancer, lost themselves in complete devotion and in meditation. Dance was one of the greatest forms of meditation which there was. And they tried, therefore, to lose their personalities and acquire the divinity and that is what was presented before the audience and the audience saw it the audience the rasik responded to it and would awaken the grace within themselves so the dancer also had this marvelous social contract a divine duty to perform and the, uh, it was recognized deeply by society society that gathered in temples and monasteries to see the dance. Now there are uh, few places where uh, such uh, dance, dance which is for the divine, dance which is in fact divine, dance which transports you. There are few places today where such dance survives. As you know, most of it has been preserved and is to be seen uh, on stages. But there are a few places. And uh, our first film today will take you to Manipur and the Rasa Leela of Manipur, 
which is one of the finest expressions of traditional dance that is in India. I might mention that uh, uh, the same uh, social contract survives in the trans Himalayas, in Ladakh and Spiti, where the Lamas perform their dances as a social contract with the people. So ladies and gentlemen, it is a great pleasure for me to bring before you this film today. And I might remind you of what we have spoken earlier about the philosophy of aesthetics in Indian thought, where our response to beauty and grace transported us. And that grace created a realm which was in fact supposed to be akin to Brahmananda or the bliss of salvation itself. So all this is so beautifully combined in the uh, uh, tradition which you're going to see, which also combines Bhakti Yoga. And I'll be happy to talk more about it with you after the screening. So I will request uh, Mr. Arun Bhargav with my many thanks for the excellent screenings that he has been doing to please run the film uh, uh, Celestial Dancers of Manipur. Thank you. Uh -huh. Manipur, the bejeweled land, is tucked away between lush green hills of northeast India. Indeed, it has preserved many jewels of the ancient culture of India. The people of Manipur had a unique tradition of worship through the ecstasy of dance. They believed that they were the descendants of Gandharvas, celestial musicians, and they sought communion with the divine through music and dance. The ancient faith of the people of Manipur blended elements of ancestor worship, Shaivism and Tantric cults. They celebrate the Lai Haroba, literally meaning the merriment of the deities. The festival begins with the summoning of the spirit of the deity from the water. It is a unique and joyous form of worship where the entire community comes together to express their devotion through dance. These dances are not performances but are an essential and integral part of religious practice. Lai Harauba, you know, if we look at it scientifically, it is expressing the creation of the art. The life begins from the water. That is how it expresses. Then the belief, how the society, how man became man, then how the society was being created. These are all expressed in the Lai Harauba. Lai Harauba is a way of life of the people of Manipur. When we speak about the dances, we cannot separate dance from our lives, our worship. In fact, according to Manipuri legends, even the whole universe was created to dance and music. This is a very interesting thing portrayed in the ancient, very ancient theatre form called the Lai Harauba, which may perhaps be one of the oldest living religious theater traditions in the world. In fact, Manipuris always worship their gods and goddesses through dance and music.
the bhakti cult of vaishnavism spread throughout india in the medieval period this believes in a very direct and personal love of the lord the soul of man is seen pining in separation from him the effort is always to lose oneself in adoration of the lord to become one with him throughout the whole of india this led to the blossoming of a new religious culture in which poet saints played a leading role the 15th century saw the emergence of great saints including ramananda kabir vallabhacharya namdev and chaitanya The philosophy of Vaishnavism was accepted by the people all over the plains of northeastern India from the 15th century onwards. The oldest Vishnu temple in Manipur is at Bishnupur, about 35 kilometers southwest of the capital city of Imphal. It was made in 1467 in the reign of King Kiyamba. By the 17th century the people of manipur had embraced the philosophy of vaishnavism they merged it with their ancient practices and exquisite religious dances so some people those who know the culture of manipur and those who studied something of manipur they said each manipuri is an artist even a child just after born when the child is little bit conscious when he or she can just listen or look at the mother so mother is to start saying tadding so just folding the hands in the artistic movement so the child starts it's like the brazil even a child he goes with a football so it's like that in manipur a child starts with tadding uh, manipur though it is a small state of the country it has got enormous amount of cultural heritages the traditional kodya theater of manipur is the most popular form of art today the holi festival is the biggest festival in manipur people observe for 5 days the the color play there this drum is very important it's related with the holi see it started with the uh, mridanga you know now the poom the mridanga is right from the very birth of a child till the death of a man in our manipuri society there is the involvement of the drums we have you know we call it pung there are many varieties In Indian philosophy it has always been believed that the aesthetic experience when one is transported and loses oneself in the beauty of nature or of art is an experience akin to brahmanand itself it is in this moment that the ego the preoccupation with the self appears to fade away and we truly feel that we are a part of the divinity of existence It is in this manner that the Manipuri worshipper wishes to lose himself entirely through a complete absorption in his dance. Vaishnavism and the bhakti cult found here a fertile ground for the blossoming of one of the most beautiful religious traditions. 
Manipuris reach out in ultimate surrender and devotion to Lord Krishna by losing themselves in the ecstasy of their dance. From the 16th century, we started organizing the beautiful Sankirtanas of Manipur, culminating in the creation of Ras Lila during the reign of Rajarshi Bhadya Chandra. You'll be interested to know that he himself was a great artist. In the first Ras Lila, he played the drums himself. And his daughter, Bimbavati, the princess, played the role of Radha. And the queen was the main leading gopi. To the Vaishnavas of Manipur, the Sankirtan, including the Rasa Leela, is their worship and puja. All the important occasions of life are marked by the performance of the Sankirtan, be it a birth, a wedding or a passing away. They lose their material concerns and are fully absorbed in the adoration of the deity. Even one's own life is punctuated with these Sankirtanas. When a child is born on the sixth day, there will be Sasti Puja, then there will be a Sankirtana. It's not entertainment, it's worship, thanksgiving. Then when a child grows up, for instance me, when I grew up, when I was about 13, I was given the sacred trait, Upanayana. Again another Sankirtana. Then the third Extremely important Sankirtan is performed during the wedding. In Manipur, if you go to a Manipuri wedding, you'll see that we don't go around fire. The bride and groom won't go around fire. No. Within the Sankirtan performance, the bride and groom will take these circles. Sankirtana represents divinity and we don't need fire then you'll be surprised that the greatest and most important Sankirtana happens after one's death, the Shraddha, the 13th or 14th day of the death. Many people who are outside of this, our civilization may even find it strange that why should these people be singing and dancing after somebody has died? No, it's nothing very strange. It's worship, not entertainment. This is the greatest form of where should we call it Mahayagnya? These are in fact the greatest reflection of bhakti in a performing art, very palpable. And the whole society patronizes it. Each Sankirtan artist earns very well. In fact, they are booked all the year round because they are needed for uh, worship for festivals as well as for occasions like births, weddings and all these occasions. They, they are very reluctant to come out of their land because they are respected, they earn well. The golden age of Manipuri dance came in the 18th century. King Bhagya Chandra, a devout worshipper of Krishna, wrote a treatise and codified the dances in the Govinda Sangeet Leela Vilas. Bhagya Chandra is believed to have seen Lord Krishna and his beloved Radha dancing together in a dream. He built the temple of Sri Govindji in 1776 and thus began the worship of Krishna and Radha, which continues in Manipur till today. When it came to Ras Leela, it's one of the most picturesque 
socially supported religious theater performed only in the temples or especially erected mandapa. People don't come just to witness it. People come to worship it. It's a kind of uh, puja for them, for darshan. In this kind of an ambience, the audiences and the performers exchange a kind of communication only experience in the actual mandapa or the temple ambience which you cannot find in theaters. Krishna, the word comes from the root of akarshan, attraction. He is the personification of our attraction to the divine. It is most marvelous to see how Indian philosophic paths use the entire range of human emotions to lead us always to that which is beyond. There is no denial of human warmth in Indian worship. Even our feelings of love are used to take us in a seamless path towards divine knowledge. The word puja has sometimes been misinterpreted by European writers as prayer. Others have understood it correctly to mean adoration. Indic deities are adored with incense, water, milk, flowers and through music and dance. In Indian thought, the material world around us and our day-to-day -day concerns are considered to be maya or mithya, illusions. We perceive these illusions because of our limited sensibilities. The purpose of the philosophic path is for us to be able to see the truth beyond to lose our egos and our concerns in the material world. To rise up in awareness, to see the beauty of all that there is around us. To see that all is divine and therefore divinely beautiful. To lose ourselves in adoration of that beauty. One of the greatest embodiments of this exquisite philosophical quest is the Rasa Leela of Manipur. We are at the Govindji temple in Imphal. These are two little Krishnas who are all ready for the dance. Because today there is going to be a Gosta Leela which will be performed here in the Govindji temple. Manipur is one of the very few places where these early traditions continue and flourish till today. The whole of society participates in these. For every mother, her child is after all Krishna, the focus of all her akarshan, her adoration. When we worship Krishna, we worship just for the sake of worship, without caring for the result. They go to Ras Lila not to, to witness, but to pay devotion to Krishna. Gopis were just reflections of the Paramatma. They were just reflections. This idea, this philosophical idea is very, is very much there. Krishna is everywhere. Krishna is everywhere, Krishna is, is, is in the pillar, Krishna is the drum, Krishna is in you, Krishna is in me. The dances of the Ras Leela cover the life of Krishna from his childhood pranks and exploits to his dalliance with Radha and the gopis. Each dancer represents humanity's pangs of separation from the Lord and the yearning to be united with him. All humans are like the gopis, ever seeking and desiring the Lord. 
the playful lord is omnipresent and dances with all the gopis simultaneously each gopi dances lost in the belief that krishna dances with her alone Finally the bhakt and the lord are united in the dance of Krishna and Radha When a Manipuri Vaishnav goes to the Rasila he goes to surrender entirely at the feet of Sri Krishna to lose oneself When uh, Manipuri dies, um, the general idea is that he goes to Vrindavan. He does not go to Vaikuntha. He goes um, to Vrindavan. That is the idea. In Manipuri dance, the mood or bhava is conveyed through gentle and expressive body movements rather than only through facial expressions. The dance is a continuous flow of rounded and gentle movements which blend into one another. However complicated a composition or choreographic pattern may be there will never be a hard edge. No straight line no angular movements all is one movement merging into another giving a sense of continuity in ras leela in this way both dancing and singing reflect the whole range of vaishnava bhakti don't be surprised if the audience shed tears of appreciation at times they come and go prostrate in front of the ras dhari or the ras teacher and both of them sharing a moment of ecstasy in tears you don't find them clapping sh shouting bravo and this kind of a thing they don't do that it is believed that the ground upon which the ras leela is performed becomes vrindavan the bhakts keep and treasure the dust which has thus been made sacred the statement of krishna na ham basame vaikunthe na yogi hridaye cha mad bhakta yatra gayanti tatra shishtami narad this is what krishna said i don't stay in vaikunthe i don't stay in the hearts of the yogis either Wherever my bhaktas are singing, I'm there, Narad. Bhakti may be explained in many, many different ways, and of course, all the Vaishnava sahitya literature will go through very extensive deliberations, you know, uh, compositions and uh, arguments. Those are for scholars, but for a simple bhakta, just fall in love with God. I believe that Manipur is certainly one of the very few pockets left on this planet where the essence of human civilization and culture is preserved not only by the artists by the whole society and artists together this is extremely important in a world where everything is commercial and where very very popular art aimed at pure entertainment and nothing else is bombarded to our senses through all the electronic medias time that we sat back and thought over it and find real sensitiveness sensibility which touches the heart which touches the mind and uplift us gopis are lovers we are all gopis and krishna is the only purusha we are all prakriti because after all we cannot think of god in a very abstract way 
many people do that, many jnanis do it, but we bhaktas do not do that. We personalize it. Because we are human beings, we can only think of human terms. So, as humans, if I have to love, I have to love somebody. So my choice was, love God, why not love Him, fall in love with Him. Nothing is more beautiful than Krishna. The whole world is inside Krishna. <laughs> Thank you, Arun, for that excellent uh, screening which you did. My many thanks to Guru uh, Darshan. It is, in fact, uh, such a wonderful role that Guru Darshan has played as a public, truly as a public broadcaster over so many years, uh, sponsoring my making of uh, deeply researched films on so many aspects of uh, Indian culture. Without an eye on uh, commercialism, without an eye on TRP, but uh, simply uh, as a public broadcaster supporting uh, the research and the uh, cultural work of its own. So as uh, Guru Singhajit Singh says, why not fall in love with God? How marvelous. And that is the marvelous personification of Krishna. Even the attraction within us, the force of attraction within us. Even the love that we feel, which is such an immensely important and such a beautiful part of our existence. Even that is taken so beautifully and guided in the right direction by the personification of the divinity. And since our greatest attraction is towards our children, we also have the personification of uh, baby Krishna. Really, to pull at our heartstrings, to open up the floodgates of our love and direct them all towards the divine. For all that there is, is after all, divine. And divinity is after all, everywhere. And uh, as you would have seen in the Koshta Leela, in Imphal, in the Govindji temple, the women have come with their Krishnas. Mind you, they are not their children dressed up like Krishna, but they are in fact Krishna. For for each woman, her child is the focus of her attraction. He is her Krishna. How wonderful. What a joyous spirit. What a joyous spirit in which to live. What a joyous spirit in which to understand life and to understand divinity. Quite marvelous, really. I would be happy to uh, answer any questions. There's nothing more we can say. Dumaji, uh, our culture is so rich uh, in this uh, sentiment of love for the Lord of our heart that uh, every individual in our society, regardless of his academic excellence or academic achievements, uh, can really feel that love for the, between the mother and the child uh, going all the way up to the divinity that is present in everybody. Like uh, Yadnya Valka said, Isha Vasyam Idam Sarva. The entire universe, cosmos, is permeated with God, nothing but God. So once we recognize it and practice in every sphere of our life and existence, right from birth and even after you're dead, 
then I think we are at peace. So thank you so much. Enjoyed it very much. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. And Vinayji, you gave the meaning of word puja as adoration, which is wonderful. But can it we have like worship also the same meaning or worship mm -hmm. and adoration? There is a difference. No. It is a uh, puja is adoration. And that is what is special and beautiful about uh, the Indian traditions. So it is that we adore the deity. We lose ourselves in adoring the deity. It is that same spirit of adoration which we see from the very earliest art from ancient times. We lose ourselves in adoring the deity. And as you see through the dance, in fact, uh, there are deities in the Indian tradition which are deities of adoration. There is Vajralasya, deity of grace. So, uh, it is, uh, it, is, it is not only water and incense and milk and flowers, but music and the fruits of our thought, the fruits of our creativity, that are all used to adore the deity, to lose ourselves in adoration. So puja is adoration. Thank you. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you. Uh, you gave me some very important points or approach to when I give um, uh, tours at the Hindu Mandir. I use some of it, but you gave me uh, more more arrows to my in, in my cure how to how to integrate because. Uh, that adoration, that love, the using love is probably the most uh, uh, powerful emotion that we have, how we use it. Uh, I, I talk about it a little bit in, in my tours, but you gave me a lot more. Thank you. I'm so glad that it was useful. And I'm so glad that you have imbibed it. Thank you so much. Thank you. I think that was the aha uh, moment for me too, for uh, yeah. giving uh, the tools especially. Yeah, even even when I go to the uh, the, uh, the uh, schools to talk about Hinduism, I talk a little bit about this, but I think you gave me a different dimension that I can add. Uh, you know, how we use all of our facilities or emotions and all the mental attributes for, because I, I talk about dance and all those things, but you gave me a different perspective. Thank you. One more time. One for tours, one for schools. <laughs> My pleasure entirely. I'm so glad.